In this tutorial we're going to look at uh, power integrity and why it's become more and more important today. So as we look at traditional electronics design work, we're faced with more FPGAs, we're faced with more uh, clocks, high-speed data signals. So as, as the voltages have dropped, um, beforehand when uh, you look at FPGAs and so on, they would accommodate for about 10% uh, of tolerance. You had 10%, so that would give us about 500 millivolts peak to peak that we had to measure. And that was easy to, to do in most cases, in most scenarios. When we're looking at 3.3 or 1, 1 volt signals with such a small tolerance level, we're looking really down to about 30 millivolts uh, peak to peak values that we want to measure. Here we've got our RTO2044, the 4 gig oscilloscope with the uh, four channels there and a demo board that we're going to try and use. So we've got a, um, an FPJ there where the rail is coming in at about 1.2 volts where we can actually probe onto just one of the outer pins there. We're going to have a look and see what that looks like. So most of the time we've got a um, passive probe that we tend to use. These come as standard with most scopes if you like they are a 10 is to 1 probe, um, so they're, the dynamic range on them are not too bad as well, and for most applications they're, they're pretty good. Um, the problem that you have when measuring these uh, power rails and the, or these kind of signals is that the probe itself, as you can see here, if I bring the, the vertical scale down to 1 millivolts, so that's the lowest sensitivity of the scope, as soon as I add that probe in, that's going to go up to 10 millivolts because it's a, a 10 is to 1 probe and you also see that it adds a lot of noise onto the whole system itself um, so that for the kind of measurements that we want to do especially on a, as we said before um, the 1 is to 1 um, or 10 is to um, uh, the 10 is to 1 probes um, you get a certain amount of noise that's coming through if you may um, so I'm going to go ahead and probe on to this, this signal here, uh, just to give you an idea of what we're looking at. And you can see our, our signal's gone way off the screen now, so we can go into our dial here and then enter an offset. I'm just going to go into the 1.2 volts. There we are. Let's move the trigger point as well to a decent level. And then we see our our signal just there. Um, as I said before, the problem is now you're at a 10 millivolt per division scale, so you're seeing about about 10 millivolts. So you can put a measurement on there. So let's go ahead and put a, a peak to peak measurement onto that signal, and you can sort of read that out that about 15 uh, 15 millivolts, sort of worst case scenario there. Um, if we actually do a quick ground check on this, so let's go ahead and uh, change some of the settings. So I'm just going to loop this together and then bring the offset back to zero. You can very quickly, just like a sanity check, just check. Okay, we're actually seeing about 10 or 20 millivolts of noise uh, from the whole system. So that validates that we're probably measuring just the noise from the scope on the probe and not the actual board itself and we can't actually see anything from that signal. So we can rule that particular probe out of the way and we can maybe use these passive probes. Now they're a lot more better because they have a, a, a clickable alternation so you can go how much you can see in that camera but you can actually see it's a, a 10 is to 1 and a 1 is to 1 probe so you can actually click that and change the um, the actual attenuation so for, for um, an exercise like this we probably would use the 1 is to 1 side and that is really good because then that gives us a lot more sensitivity uh, from the whole system itself so we're going to try this exercise again try and validate the probe and see okay how much amount of noise is coming from my probe itself. Um, so you can see there, we're just going to bring the offset down. Um, let's do it this way, we're going to loop it a bit like this. So we're going to put that to zero. So 
Saber offset. And you can see it's way lesser than a millivolt. So now we've qualified, okay, um, that the probe itself is not adding too much more noise to our whole system itself, and we should be able to see something that is of relevance, let's say. So let's go ahead and plug it into our rail voltage. Just down here. So as you can see, it's gone up, so I need to change the offset here to 1.2 volts. Ah, now you see I've run out of range uh, for the offset. So as you can see, I'm at down at 1 millivolt setting, and the probe itself doesn't have enough offset because I'm actually using the offset within the scope itself. So if I change my scale here, I probably could get enough offset let's say to bring that down to the center so now I've got 2.2 volts but as soon as I change my sensitivity to see down to that signal I can't see anymore because it doesn't have enough offset in the scope to actually compensate for that voltage so traditionally traditionally most users would go into here bring the offset back down to zero and then go rather from DC coupling go to AC coupling so the disadvantage here is we're looking at a DC rail and we really can't see the DC components, say, but at least it'll give us some uh, look at just the noise levels of, that's coming in and so on. And we can actually have a look at this and look at that. It it's, looks fairly good. Um, it's way about, about 2 millivolts peak to peak. Well, let's go ahead and do a measurement just so that we can satisfy ourselves that we're not doing yet. Yeah, we can see about 2 millivolts uh, or 2.5 millivolts just there. That looks great, that would probably pass all of our threshold levels and so on and things as well. You can see there's a few spikes in there and so on, so that could be of various frequencies. So if for some reason we would want to do, uh, we could put cursors on it and try and measure those frequencies. But most of the time a really good tool is to do an FFT. Um, so we can select the FFT button there and uh, we have our different FFT settings that comes up and at the moment it's now from DC to up to 4 gigs so let's go ahead and select that on and you can see it's we've got our DC component there it's fairly um, fairly flat let's say but let's go ahead um, so you can see the the roll off uh, and so on but it's it's these these probes don't have enough bandwidth if you like though so because of the one is to one they're probably about a hundred megs or so on and things within the, within the, the probe itself so if you go into here let's just go ahead and say the stop frequency is about a gig and we probably need a little bit more resolution bandwidth there so we can actually see where the components are coming from and there you go you can see where our spikes where all our components are spending most of their time and you can see it's mostly around the 100 meg, you have something around the, the 200 meg point if you like and, and, and that pretty much everything else looks looks fairly flat you see occasionally there is something that pops up over there on that side as well but largely everything looks very very clean very very uh, not, not too bad and our, our thresholds are, are okay too um, now this is fine for most applications because it's low bandwidth side but say you had a radio right next to it, or you had a, um, a Zigbee line, or a, a USB 3.0 signal, any high-speed comms right next to it, and so on. Um, so suddenly, um, you're actually not working at a lower bandwidth level, you have to go really, really high. Um, so this is probably where you would want to look at a, a high bandwidth, and that, that's the problem with these probes, that they are quite low in, in, um, in bandwidth, if you may. So let's go ahead and use one of these probes here. So this is a dedicated power rail probe. Uh, it's a two gig uh, bandwidth probe, if you like. So a lot more bandwidth than the uh, than the than the probe there. This is also a one is to one probe. Um, so it's got the uh, the sensitivity that we need, and it's um, the dynamic range on these are not not that high. So it's only about eight fifty millivolts. But it's got an internal offset, if you like, for about plus or minus 60 volts. So we can actually um, change our offset rates and so on. And it's also DC coupled. So you can actually look at the DC component of, 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 uh, of things rather than just the AC values, if you like. 
and that's that's what the probe looks like and I've just used an accessory here where I can actually just plug this in and then just connect it onto the board fairly reasonably let's say so uh, let's go ahead and put that on here okay so for a second I'm just going to minimize all of these and I'm just going to look at the the current uh, probe uh, that I've got there um, as we can see already uh, the bandwidth is now the full bandwidth of the instrument if you like which is the 4 gig we've got DC and 50 ohm coupling if you may so we can get the full bandwidth if you like um, one thing that's good on this probe here it's got a built-in uh, voltmeter so it's a 16-bit uh, voltmeter if you like that you can actually enable and then you can actually see what the absolute value of that DC value is and then you can enter that offset in very very quickly so this is a lot more better than doing a, a traditional measurement and so on as, and as you can see regardless of the setup that we have it's always measuring and always active uh, in the corner there so let's go ahead and put that on the side and we can actually see okay that's our signal and that's um, that's effectively what we're uh, going to look at and so on. So that's the amount of uh, 1.2 volts that we're seeing there and the amount of noise that we're seeing. So let's go ahead and do the same thing again. Let's put a measurement on there on channel 2 this time and this time we're getting about, about double, so about 5 or 4.5 4 volts of peak-to-peak uh, -peak value let's say. Um, now why is that? Why are we seeing different different things on there and so on? So a good way of checking is um, because this is a 2 gig probe, we're actually seeing a lot more uh, of the frequency range. Now, we can quickly again do the same way, put a FFT on. Uh, so let's go ahead and do the same settings that we had before, about a gig there, and then put the FFT on that. And I'm going to put these side by side so we can actually have a look and compare. Um, so that's the probe there and that's the FFT off of that that's that the second channel that probe there and then the FFT off of that now we're seeing a, a larger DC component on that FFT so we can actually go ahead and change that um, we probably have a lot more resolution bandwidth on that one so let's go ahead and make them the same one meg we've got one millivolt one millivolt on both and you see immediately more amount of data that you weren't able to see on this particular probe. Uh, a lot more broadband, uh, way up to about 500 megahertz. We're still seeing that that little blip that coming uh, occasionally, but a lot more detail that we weren't able to see before with a with a band limited probe, let's say.